Jesus in our gospel today comes with great power and authority. They are amazed at his power, at his words, his ability to drive out demons. And so it's important for us that we have a Savior who comes with this great power. He has power over demons, over illness, even power over death. And yet it's beautiful that not only do we have a Savior who comes with this great power and authority, but also one who comes with such tenderness and mercy and shares those really human qualities. And we really see that in a powerful way in Mark's Gospel that we'll be reflecting on throughout much of this year. Mark really gives us both those sides of Jesus, who we know is fully God and also fully human. So we hear about those fully God moments in these great miracles that he performs in casting out demons. And we also see his great humanity in the tenderness that he shows in his human frailties, like needing rest, needing sleep, uh, needing food, all those kind of things which make him fully human as well. This is something important for us to reflect on as we reflect on this time where we really need that Savior. It's also a time when we can reflect on really needing one another. The fact is that we can have a tendency, particularly in our own culture, to try and do things ourselves and to kind of have that independence in a way that kind of seems to be that I do it on my own, or I can make things happen based on my own effort, on my own ability. And yet we're called to reflect on the fact that we are deeply dependent creatures, that we can't do anything without God, and really there's not much we can do without other people either, that we're really so interconnected as human beings. And so it's important for us to, to really respond to the Savior who has come, both in power and authority, but also with great tenderness and love. St. Paul, in our second reading, speaks about how this might be lived out in the life of Christians. Particularly, he talks about those two states for those who are married and those who are unmarried. And both of these, as we know from the very early beginnings of the church, were both highly respected and important part of Christian life. St. Paul obviously is, is saying here that, and throughout this chapter 7, of which we hear just a piece of chapter 7 from this first letter to the Corinthians, he's saying about that those who are single, those who choose celibacy for the kingdom of God, are able to serve in a way that's a bit broader than those who are married. And that's just a very practical way of understanding that, you know, those who are married, their primary act of service, their primary way of serving the Lord, is always going to be first and foremost through their spouse, by loving their spouse and their children and their family. And that rightly has to be their primary concern in their energies, their time, their money goes toward those things. Or as St. Paul, Paul speaks about those who are unmarried have a little bit more of a broader opening to be able to serve others in society and to prepare them for the kingdom of God because they don't have those same responsibilities. Now certainly either of those, these vocations can be lived well uh, or can be lived poorly in terms of, of marriage or celibacy. And celibacy is an important thing when it's really chosen by those who set themselves apart those who are religious men and women in a particular way, uh, who, who choose to join religious communities, which is something that we'll be reflecting on next week with uh, the first week of February, particularly on February 2nd, the Feast of the Presentation is the feast uh, where we also pray for those in consecrated life. Because Simeon and Anna, who the Holy Family meets in the temple, are those who in fact uh, represent you know, the religious life. They have dedicated themselves to, um, to being in the temple in prayer and worship of God. And so what St. Paul is saying here is that uh, whatever vocation we find ourselves in, to commit ourselves fully to the kingdom of God. That is going to look a little bit different based on whether we're married, whether we're unmarried. And yet we are called to serve one another with a focus on preparing others for the kingdom of heaven for the kingdom of God. And so whether that be something that we have kind of directly chosen, 
or even for those who may not have chosen to be called into a celibate life. For example, those who become widows, those who become divorced and separated, those who may have same-sex attraction, those who are called to live in a celibate life, it can seem like a burden or even a curse that they aren't able to be maybe in the married state that they would prefer. And yet God is using you, he has the opportunity to use you, to use any of us in whatever state we're in to serve his purposes, to be those who can proclaim the good news, to be those who can be uh, prophets and welcoming people into the good news of the kingdom, so we can have a, a way of deeper uh, conversion of heart and then help others into a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus through the ways that we serve one another. And so we're called to be those people of loving service, to recognize our need for God, but also our need for one another, our need for other people. It's about those lives of service. And we can be witnesses in whatever life we're called to, that the more our lives witness to the truth of what it means to follow Jesus, the more powerful we can be that invitation to others. I was recently listening to a, a podcast, which was uh, speaking about a focused missionary. It was a, a focused missionary speaking to uh, someone who was interviewing him. Uh, and a focused missionary is someone who works on college campuses to invite college students to, to Bible studies and, and to different faith events and you know, to get to know the Catholic faith. Uh, whether they be Catholic, to know it in a deeper way, or they've never experienced Catholicism to you know, encounter it for the first time. And he was speaking about you know, one of the ways he does that is simply by inviting them over to his house for dinner. I don't know if that's still taking place during COVID or if that's more of his experience in previous times, but he always says it's a very powerful witness that these college students who you know, are surrounded oftentimes by kind of a life of partying, of drinking, um, you know, sleeping around with other people, not really focused obviously on, on the Christian virtues many times, uh, that college campuses aren't usually the places where that's as really apparent. But the focus missionaries are out to change that, and, and they do that through these personal encounters. And this missionary was just saying about how by inviting someone over to his house to see a different way, to see family life, how he dealt with his family, uh, both in the love that they shared together, but also, you know, the real trials that they faced, and, you know, just kind of the, the messiness of things, you know, speaking about his young daughter, you know, um, you know, soiling her diaper and taking it off and, you know, like uh, wiping it out everywhere and he's trying to clean things up while he's trying to talk to this uh, young college student. But it all shows that, you know, that loving concern of family life and, and for all its good qualities and even its struggles and messiness that, you know, God is really there in that place is that we as Christians can really learn how to love one another in whatever vocation we're serving in, whether it be uh, single or whether it be a married vocation. So our good news today to reflect on is the fact that we do have a Savior who comes with great power and authority, but also comes with great tenderness, love, and mercy. And that he invites us then into that deeper relationship with him so that we can be those who share the gospel and the kingdom of God with others. So the fact is that we need God, we need a Savior, and we also need one another. So we pray that we may be more open to that call to love and serve one another, uh, because we have been loved and served by God throughout the course of our lives. And so we pray that during this time we can reflect more deeply on our own calling and how God is inviting us to help share with others the good news of the kingdom of God 